Hey you guys, good morning. It is a Friday morning here and Issa has decided to make some pancakes because we saw this little thing in the Aldi sales ad that like turns pancakes into a bunny rabbit and she really wants to do that for breakfast. So that's what we're gonna do this morning for our big breakfast. Mommy, and can I we got, make you waffles? Well, pancakes. Oh, no. We making pancakes? Yeah. Yeah, we make good pancakes. And I would love to get done a ton of other things. I have a whole list um, for today and tomorrow, but we shall just see, you know, how far I get. You just dump it, Aaliyah. I don't know if you're okay. Aaliyah, what are you making? Pink pinks. <laughs> He says getting the salt out. We need baking soda and some oil. So what do you like about cutting oranges versus peeling them? Um, oh. Peeling them takes longer. Cutting them, um, one, is easier to eat. Two, um, it's faster. I got gotcha. you. Oh, Micah, I have your oil. <laughs> Don't need an immersion blender. Close it and so I can cut your orange. Oh, okay, Thank I'm you. Our general rule of thumb is that whatever time they wake up, they can eat any fruit they want to while they're waiting for like a bigger breakfast. Um, sometimes if I know what I'm making is going to take a while, I'll, you know, they'll have like a piece of toast or something really small as well. But most of the time a fruit tides them over until I get breakfast actually on the table, where in this case, Isabella gets breakfast on the table. <laughs> he's so gentle with the but how Michael picked butterflies. Mommy, wait for me. Come on, sweet baby. Down flowers. Oh, look, we got a bunny in the making. You can have two more chocolate chips. If this was Mimi, you can have two chocolate chips. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Whoa. Ta da. Show us how to pray. Can you show us how to pray? Good job. Aliyah, you wanna do it? Thank you, God, for our food. For our food. For our food. Thank you, God, for our food. Yeah. What do we say? <laughs> okay, to get myself started, I am just going to make a quick batch of bone broth. Uh, these are my scraps of like carrot tops and onion peels. Some people roast their bones, but just not everybody got time for that, you guys. So I'm all about uh, <laughs> speed. So I just save bones and literally just dump them on in there. Then I'm in the pantry where we keep our filtered water. Um, you know, I would love to just use faucet water, but I hate to know that I'm making this nourishing, like nutrient dense bone broth with like terrible tap water. So um, this is alkaline water that we um, pick up from a place called the water tree. And so we want to get like an in-home system, but for now we just haven't yet. So here we go. If you're making broth, don't forget your apple cider vinegar. I do like to shake it every time um, to make sure that the mother isn't getting like stuck there at the bottom. Um, and I don't really measure, I just kind of splash it on in there. But that just helps um, like really leach and extract all the nutrients from the bones into the broth. 
If you're in a hurry, I've done this in as little as 30 minutes in the Instant Pot, but for like maximum nutrient uh, extraction, I do like to go longer. So today I don't need this for anything. I'm not in a rush. So I'm going to do two hours and 30 minutes. All right, Guillermo has been working on this like nice patio area for us to put like our water tables and our sand table. Got the umbrella. It's seriously been like, they've been out here for like literal hours at some point. So I can see this area right through the kitchen window, which is really nice because our kitchen is kind of closed off from our house. It's not my favorite thing in the world. Um, we one day plan to do some renovations to fix that problem. But right now I at least enjoy that they have somewhere safe to play and you know, have a great time and I can still like keep an eye on them. Okay, and I have these ripe bananas. I was gonna make banana nut muffins, but I actually saw something on the internet. You know, all the good ideas are out there. I'm gonna try my hand at making a new type of like baked oatmeal that is like chocolatey and sweetened with banana. So let's give it a try. All right, so I'm gonna be using four bananas. And I like using my Vitamix because um, then I can add in the banana peel. If you've been around here long, you know that I, I bake banana things with banana peels because the peel itself is very high in several nutrients. And you know, it's something that you usually just trash and so why not get some use out of it? Now I do usually do half and half um, or like I'll peel off, you know, some of it and leave some of it on there. Um, I don't want it to be like too noticeable. So it probably is about half and half that goes in the blender and half that I throw away. All right, then the recipe I'm using also just calls for four eggs. So I do the eggs and the banana in the blender together because uh, the, you know, the liquid from the eggs just helps the banana mash up a little easier in the Vitamix. So something new and different to this recipe is that you actually pour hot milk on the dry oats um, and let them sit for 10 minutes. So I'm guessing the consistency of this baked oatmeal is going to be, you know, a little softer maybe than other ones that I've made. So I'm pretty interested to try it out. Mom gets a lot of All right, I'm waiting on that still for 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and get started on Mommy. granola once again. I'm always making granola. If you want detailed instructions, you can definitely check out one of my other videos. Basically, it's a bunch of oats. I make chocolate granola. I throw in a bunch of nuts and seeds and all sorts of good stuff to add extra nutrition. And then I sweeten it with maple syrup and it's super delicious. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna put my banana and egg mixture in my bowl. Then I will add a little bit of salt. And I'm gonna be adding in a third cup of cacao powder. Alrighty, I'm gonna mix this around, make it look nice and chocolatey. I am gonna add about a fourth a cup of coconut sugar too. Um, I just am worried that the bananas won't quite be sweet enough. I could be wrong, but for a good measure, I'm gonna add a fourth a cup of coconut sugar. I feel like that is reasonable for the amount of oats that I'm making. All right, we're also putting in two teaspoons of baking powder. I like to get the aluminum free. Trader Joe's has a really um, like cost efficient one, so I really like their baking powder for sure. Just for funsies, not part of the recipe, I'm gonna be adding in, I'm just gonna dash in some chia seeds because I just don't think it'll hurt anything whatsoever. Um, but yeah, so this is like the, oats that have been sitting here in the milk so because it was hot milk I guess it kind of helps it absorb it a little easier um, then I'm gonna pour in the chocolate banana mixture mixing it all around all right I'm gonna pour this into I think a 9 by 13 is what I'm gonna put it in and then bake it at 350 Guillermo help me do all the dishes from breakfast I'm going to try to rinse as I go as to not have a million dishes at the end. Yeah, so like it literally took me, not joking, like 
30 seconds to clean this. And if I just keep doing that with all the big dishes along the way, then I end up not having an overwhelming amount of dishes. Guillermo does most of the dishes. He doesn't tend to get overwhelmed, but I definitely do get overwhelmed by like lots of dishes, especially when they're taking up the whole sink, going out onto the counter. So I really at least try to like wash them as I go on any form of like food prep, meal prep day. That is like a huge key. That way you don't end the day having all this food, but also having all these dishes because then you're going to be exhausted and probably feel a little bit defeated and maybe not everyone to do it again. So wash your dishes as you go. For the Vitamix, you just put some soap and water and turn it on. It's gonna be chocolate baked oatmeal. All right, I also went ahead and topped it with some walnuts and in the oven it goes. All right, I am finishing up mixing the granola. Got the baked oatmeal in the oven. Gonna get this in there right on top of it. All right, even in the midst of food prep, there are hungry children. So I'm going to make some mayonnaise to make some tuna, and then that will get lunch done, and then I'll have extra mayonnaise for throughout the week. A lot of things on repeat around here. Uh, making mayonnaise is, a, is, you know, a weekly thing sometimes. So I got, do have a new helper today. All right, JJ, you got to cover up the yolks. No, 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 neither of them are covered. You want to get both the yolks and then touch it for a second. Go. And let go. Good. Now hold it down. Hold it down. Hold the jar, baby. <laughs> you hold the jar for me, yeah? I really like these bowls here uh, because they have these lids. So I like making stuff in case I do have, ah, seriously, oh my goodness, throwing toys in the tuna. Uh, if I have leftovers, which this I honestly am doubtful of, um, I can just put a lid on it and not have to dirty another dish and it can just go straight in the fridge. I really like tuna. It is incredibly high in protein, which is pretty wonderful. Um, and I like this brand here, the Safe Catch, because they test every single tuna for um, mercury and they make sure it's like 10 times lower than the FDA amount. So um, this is really good, especially like if you're pregnant or nursing and you really need to watch your mercury levels, then this is an excellent brand. All right, we're going to mash it up with a fork. It's also like um, very... It's like really solid. Like I feel like um, a lot of other brands you get, the tuna is like just really thin and like floating in water. So I feel like this has like good substance to it. Like you can actually see the parts of the fish. So I don't know, it's really yummy. It's really fresh. It's really, really good tuna. Then I'm also adding in some wild caught sardines. Um, I feel like once you mix it all together into the tuna, you can't really taste that there's sardines in there. I don't know. It just tastes, to me, it just tastes like tuna. I think these are boneless and skinless. So they're literally just, they just mush up into nothingness pretty easy. Even if you get bone and skin in it, they're all edible. So I still just mash it all up regardless. What's that? What is that? It's sardines. You want some? Mm. Can I have some? You want no. the you want the sardines? Okay, here you go, baby. No. Wow! No. No. <laughs> no. There's plenty. It doesn't all need to be yours, stinker. You help me. Can you pour it into the strainer in here? Yeah. <laughs> Is there more? No. Yeah, there's more. Pour it. Keep pouring. Whoa. All done. Yeah. Beans. Uh, beans. Yeah, here. You can have those ones. We got to rinse them. All right. Oh, the tuna. It's just, it's already three cans of tuna. And I feel like it's not going to be enough. So, no. I'm going to go ahead and put some great northern beans in there. I didn't have any boiled eggs either, but I am going to go with the like mayonnaise and sweet pickle relish tuna today. Um, this one has natural flavors, but other than that, it is, it is truly the best I can find. Most sweet relishes, almost all of them actually, have high fructose corn syrup along with some form of food dye. So this one from Trader Joe's is my preferred one. 
Nice. Mommy, she said, I'm going to push the core in. I can't get it in. You're so Mommy, close. It's stuck right Mommy, here. I know. Mommy. Is it even almost lunchtime if Mike is not crying? That's like the, the warning. That warning, one. warning. Lunch is coming. And even night. <laughs> Alrighty, lunch is served. I also had just three croissants back here from Costco, so I cut them in half. People can either do, you know, crackers and tuna or a little tuna sandwich. Um, there we go. Ooh, look how yummy it looks. It turned out looking really good. Okay, I'm also gonna melt some chocolate and I think drizzle it on top. Will it be dessert? Will it be breakfast? Who even really knows? Yep. Alright, I just melted some chocolate chips with um, a little bit of milk and then put it in this Ziploc bag Ooh, to add a yummy chocolate topping. All right, can I it. drink that chocolate? Yeah. Is that breakfast dessert? No, that's only for me. Is it breakfast or dessert? We don't know yet. All right, well, you know, I just have a little bit of coconut. I recently had ordered shredded coconut from Azure Standard and one of these like three Two gallon, three gallon buckets. Anyway, so that is what I'm gonna put on top of my granola. This is like pretty finely shredded. Uh, usually I would, I was putting like shaved, but um, this is what I have. So I'm gonna put several scoops and then I'm gonna put it back in the oven for just like two minutes and let it kind of toast the coconut a little bit and it'll be delicious. <laughs> Scavengers, I just fed y'all lunch. Well, we're like, hungry for chocolate. <laughs> Are you only picking on chocolate chips? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna make some fermented green beans, but this is one of those things I like to not stay in the kitchen if I don't have to. So it is a fabulous day. The weather is literally perfect. I think perfect. Not too hot, not too cold, slightly breezy. It's so nice. Yummy. So I just brought the green beans outside to snap some green beans. Mommy used to do this with Gigi all the time. It's one of my favorite little chores. This and shuck and corn. Shuck and corn was, was fun too. Which side should I peel off? Both of them? No, this one. Yeah, you can eat them. You can, you can eat them. No, my kids. We're snapping green beans, baby. You just gotta break off that little stem, right? And my show us how to do it. Show us how it's done. Do you want them fermented, or you just want to eat them all raw? One bag fermented, one just eat them all raw. Christian's over there helping me weed, weed some of the stuff out of the garden. I'm just trying to find the straightest ones, like they're easiest to shove on in there. This is a quart-sized jar. I'm just stuffing it as full as I can with my green beans kind of standing upright. And then I'm going to put salt and filtered water and a loose fitting lid. And I'll just leave it on my counter. For several days i i don't really know i think you can leave it for quite a while it depends on how sour you want them really um the longer that you set them out then just like the less salty i feel like they are and the more sour that's kind of general way that it goes so like sauerkraut i recently read some people leave sauerkraut out for like like a month or more which is crazy but i left mine for like a week and a half Oh, what happened, baby? Can you help mommy? Push a green bean in there. Can you push one inside? You could eat one too. Ugh. Stick it in there. We want to fill up all the space. I'm going to add some garlic on top too, because why not get some fermented garlic out of it as well? Oh. It's, <laughs> it's getting full. It's hard to do now. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay you can break it small yeah you could just break some of them small there's always like a weird little gap that's hard to get them in there just push them down get them as packed as we can 
Isn't it such a beautiful day? And also an owie day. <laughs> it's an owie day? You got hurt a lot today? Oh man. So I am always like definitely a big advocate for being outside. Um, but I recently discovered there's this lady who started like a challenge in a podcast. I've really been enjoying them. And the challenge is to spend a thousand hours outside in a year. Now I haven't, they have like these cool tracker charts you can get for your fridge and stuff. I haven't gotten them. I feel like it might be a little hard because like not all of us are always outside all the time at the same time, you know? Um, but it has at least, I've been even more intentional like like yes like what can we do more outside we can eat more meals outside i can make fermented green beans outside like we can go on one more walk around the neighborhood or i don't know i've just been um, really just looking forward as we're going into spring and then moving into summer um, again I, I always love being outside but it's just i feel like i've gotten a new intentionality with it so fun times. It's so good to be outside. The vitamin D and the fresh air and like your feet on the earth. I don't know. For me, it just all, it all just, just makes me feel so good. So I am definitely all about it as part of a healthy lifestyle. Being outside, just go outside. Like if you're feeling stressed out, just go outside. You know, if you're feeling overwhelmed, just go outside. It's so, I don't know. There's just a, a peaceful, a peacefulness about outdoors. <laughs> We've got our garlic, and then this is a four cup container. So I think the, the running, the going amount is a teaspoon of salt per cup size container. So I'm gonna put my salt, I'm gonna put my filtered water, I'm gonna shake it up a bit. Okay, so my garlic was out from the green beans on yeah. my list today. Um, was to process some more of them. I made like crushed garlic with um, olive oil to keep in my fridge. And I loved it. So we're going to do it again. Chris is going to help me out. Uh-oh. I got to. Yeah, I got to put it back in there. Yeah, you do need to go help clean. It's cleaning time. Clean up time. I understand the feeling. I don't like it when it's clean up time either. <laughs> I don't always want to clean up. You have to push really hard. Is it good? There you go. All right, do pulse first. Oh, like that? Oh, you can, yeah. Until it's whatever consistency. Stop. Uh-huh. I think maybe three more seconds. One, two, three. I think that looks like a pretty good consistency. And then I actually saved this. This was a jelly jar and I thought it was so pretty. So I saved it and I'm gonna fill it on up with the garlic and then pour on some oil on top of it and then keep it in my fridge. And you just put it right inside whatever you're cooking and it's super wonderful. Very large jar of the minced garlic and still quite a bit of garlic. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. For now, I think I'll just put it in the fridge and just try to use it up as quick I can. Right here. I <laughs> 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 Big cleanup time turned into silly time. Okay, now that my granola is all the way cooled down, I will use a handy dandy spatula. Um, but you see how it makes these wonderful clumps? So you can kind of choose to break it up as big or as small as you want but i kind of like to leave some nice sized clusters so i'm gonna go ahead and get all of this put away and then hopefully make some muffins okay the kids are having some screen time and i actually need to go through their clothes to switch over like wintery cold long sleeve things to spring summer short sleeve things so I think that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do, take a little t pause in the kitchen. Last weekend, we actually went to like a Just Between Friend consignment sale. So I've got some like new shorts and stuff, mostly for the boys. The girls didn't really find a lot. Got the little girls some like sandals. We're actually doing swim team, so I got some goggles. And then just really cheap socks, cause in a house full of seven kids, you are always running out of socks. So this was like, 
six pairs for only $2 and six more pairs for like 75 cents because they were half off. Just hanging out in the wind. All right, I had cleared out the sink to wash a bunch of potatoes. Tonight I'm gonna make some kind of potato wee soup with the chicken broth that's done. But I noticed I had some other potatoes looking kind of sad. So I've got sweet potatoes, yellow potatoes. Did I say tomato? I don't know. Sweet potatoes, yellow potatoes, and rest of potatoes. So some will be for dinner, and I'll do some kind of food prep with the others. But since it was clean. Luna was getting all rolling around in the dirt outside and is filthy, so we're gonna give her a quick bath. Luna's taking her bath. Stop. So dirty. <laughs> <laughs> little Luna in a towel. Yeah, little Luna in a towel. Yeah. All right, we've got our scrubbed up potatoes, our scrubbed carrots, and celery. I like to leave the skin on because Again, you get a little bit more nutrients. A lot of times the nutrients in a fruit or vegetable are highly concentrated around the skin. So when you peel it, um, you just lose a lot of nutrition. So um, an onion and recently, uh, Aldi has started having different styles of this pork sausage. Before, it was always kind of more like a breakfast sausage. This one is Italian. They also have a hot one as well. Um, they do all three have flavorings, but for the price, it's just unbeatable. I do get quite a few of these every single month on top of like, you know, I get grass-fed beef and pasture-raised chicken and all of that as well. Um, and I do get some plain pork, but with the, the new flavors, I've just been trying them out lately. All right, here we go with the onion. We'll hope not to cry. They make me cry almost every time. I'll save the skins and stuff for bone broth another day. Just a very simple, frugal thing to do. Takes pretty much no effort and no additional time. Yet, you're flavoring your homemade chicken broth with something that would originally, you know, oh go in the trash. Uh, why can I not peel this skin? Oh. You're fine. <laughs> the other kitchen is much more conducive to making a video, agree? <laughs> <laughs> right, like the, the, the house we moved out of, the blue house, it has a much easier kitchen to like record in. I'm not crying yet. It's good the news. The blue house has this, and the blue house <laughs> has that. Well, you'll bust out a wall soon enough. <laughs> Think there. I do feel it. There come the tears. I'm feeling it. Let me get this in the pot super fast. Cool. Ah. All right. I'm gonna go rinse my cutting board off. I feel like I just up a little bit. My eyes coming. This is the knife. This is the knife that never goes in the dishwasher. Guillermo was actually using this knife in his sermon the other day. He was saying like, you need to, there are certain things in life. Hello, you guys. There are certain things in life that are like so important that you're like, this must never 
like be far from my reach and like me in the kitchen this knife is the thing it is a cutco knife and it is really great but um i always tell guillermo like do not ever put this knife in the dishwasher because then when i need it it's not going to be accessible to me and it's like the worst i just i don't want to cut anything with anything else so anyways he was in his sermon he was just talking about um he was talking about like grace and what grace means to us and how that's not something that we're like oh yeah like long time ago when i got saved like god's grace was there for me but now it's not really something that i think of or um you know reflect on like god's grace is always there like his grace is sufficient in our weakness and it's an ongoing thing it wasn't like a long time ago when i first came to know the lord like no grace empowers you right now today every day to live for him to bring his kingdom here don't put it on the back burner don't put that in your pocket don't put it in the dishwasher keep it on the forefront of your mind right yeah. <laughs> the church does have like a pod, like a, a YouTube video, and we're on podcasting. If you ever want to check it out, it was really good, much better than I just said it. <laughs> what a wonderful man you are! Like for real life, you're pretty awesome. <laughs> I just want to eat. Uh, he does, she just wants but to film a video. <laughs> I could have just spoken to y'all like this. I literally just set the camera at a different angle. Duh. It makes sense. You either get to see me or the carrot. And you can't see both. Sorry. But I think you've seen me cut carrots enough. <laughs> I do always cut them in half. Because I hate cutting circle, like round carrots. Because then all the little like pieces roll away. And they roll off my cutting board and they roll to the floor. And I hate it. So I always cut them lengthwise to give them a flat surface, but that is nothing new. I've been doing that for many years and I have shown y'all that many times. All right, got a pot full of sausage, lots of carrots, celery and onion. And then looky there, I'm gonna add in some of our garlic and I'm making a huge pot. So I think I'm gonna put a pretty decent sized spoonful in there. Then I'll add in my potatoes and some Italian seasoning, salt, pepper. Then I'll pour our broth right on top. There is my broth and I just put the strainer right on there and I will pour some broth right in the soup. Oh, there we go. Let it all drain out. Whoop. Put it right back on top. It's gonna be hot, but what you want is Bones you can mush with your fingers. Yeah. And these are actually a little firmer than normal. I could probably do them a second time and still get some pretty decent broth out of it. Gonna add a lot more potatoes. I just wanted to get the broth in there because I felt like the bottom was gonna burn. So I'm gonna keep cutting potatoes and adding them on in. Let this come to a boil. Okay, I'm also gonna make something to make this creamy. You do not have to do this. It is delicious like this. It is non-dairy like this. However, you can also make like a really basic cream sauce, melting some butter, a little bit of flour, and then whisk in some milk. And if you want to, you could add cheese to it. I did that last time and it was super good. Like I feel like I just took it to like a whole new level of deliciousness. Um, little Josiah. I just save him out a bunch. That way he has seconds on another day um, that's non-dairy. I've also made it with like coconut milk. You can definitely do that. It's just not as thick. Oh, good job. It's not as thick. Um, so it, it like the coconut milk itself doesn't necessarily thicken it up. Whereas the flour mixture causes the whole soup to feel more creamy. Can I, have, I just wanna eat. I know, me too. Okay, we've got 15 minutes to let the pot boil. Meantime, I'm gonna get started on some pumpkin zucchini muffins. So I'm gonna shred me up some zucchini here. I do like to leave the stem in, that way you have something to hold on to, the smaller that it gets. All right, Mr. Josiah wanted to help. <laughs> he said, but this is for cheese. <laughs> it's also for zucchini. Thank you, baby. Wait, like this? 
Yeah, you're doing it right. Yeah, just that one direction cuts it. Yeah, keep going. Why does this not cut it? Mm, why doesn't that cut it? Oh, because this. Yeah. But this has it's round on one side and sharp on the other. Yeah. <laughs> You're a little bird eating a worm. Can I, can I do this? Yeah. You do both of them. <laughs> yeah, this stem isn't as long. It's going everywhere. <laughs> it does. It does get on the counter. That's okay, though. All right, Maymay's going to help me with the muffin liners. Ooh. Yay! <laughs> They're gonna be pumpkin zucchini muffins. Two veggies, but it's gonna taste so yummy, like breakfast dessert. So I am not necessarily an advocate for always hiding like fruits and vegetables from your kids. I'm not really trying to hide the vegetables so much as just add more vegetables in something else. You know what I'm saying? Like I put tons of veggies in spaghetti. It's not necessarily because I'm trying to like hide it from my children like they eat vegetables regardless but there are some things like zucchini pumpkin muffins that you can just get extra vegetables in there without trying to feel like deceptive but if that is the only thing your kids eat with vegetables like way to go mama and the kids may be none the wiser okay so in the bowl we've got a tablespoon of well i'm making it two dozen but for one dozen you do a tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice and then you do a teaspoon of baking soda, a fourth a teaspoon of salt, and a fourth a teaspoon of baking powder in our wet ingredients. We've got our pumpkin, we've got our zucchini, our oil, and our maple syrup. I'm about to crack four eggs in there. <laughs> Gotta hit it harder, huh? You can put the shells in the can. Put the shells in there. Thank you. Another one? Another one, yeah. Four of them. <laughs> you got it. How do you crack an egg, Josiah? How do you, t like, tell us what, what do we do? Shell in there. Uh, you do this, and you if you crack it, you hold the eggshells mm. to make it make break it, it on in there. Yay! Thank you. All right, it's like really mostly the pumpkin mixture is a very mm -hmm. small mm -hmm. amount of dry ingredients. I think it's going to be a very moist batter. Which is probably why the recipe says to use an it. ice cream scoop. I want to mix it. You're going to mix it for me? Yes. Okay. Tell me to go. It's a very tiny spoon I have in there. Do I there. go? Yeah, mix it around. Mix. Mm -hmm. It's looking good. Do we want to see flour? No. Definitely not. If you do, that means you've got to mix it. More. That is true. If you still see flour, that means you gotta mix it more. I did recently buy this at a thrift store because that's, I mean, that's the kind of cheap person I am. Um, for this exact reason, uh, for things like this, for doing like cookies or muffins and things, it makes it a lot easier to measure out and try to stay clean. No, Micah, Micah. <laughs> Just trying to get him a scoop. No, you can lick it. Lick that one. No more. Okay. There's two dozen pumpkin zucchini muffins going in at 350. All right. So a little broccoli. I'm going to add in some frozen broccoli. I think it'll help cool it down a little bit too because it's very, very hot. And then I will put in a bag of my frozen spinach. I would just kind of mash it up with my hands. And that to me is just easier than cutting it on a cutting board when it's like raw. And because it's frozen, it just kind of like breaks apart. So that's what we're doing. Yeah? Uh, these are all the ones we 
not wear this. I couldn't. Um, my black shirts went to my. Okay. They didn't have any black shirts. Uh, and then I was gonna say I kept three or four in case it's warm, but there was like six in here. No, that's good. Yeah. All right, so yeah, I've got a uh, serving for tonight, a serving for another day. Uh, then I'm going to add in the cream sauce. Got a princess here and a bunch of long sleeves. Yep, put them on my bed. We'll get rid of them for now. Well, it did not turn out as creamy as last time. I think I just had more broth this time. That's the problem with not using recipes, but one way or the other, I think it'll be super delicious. Well, thank you so much for spending the day with me. Uh, my prayer is always that these videos just encourage you to keep moving forward in your health journey and just in living a full, healthy lifestyle mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. Thank y'all so much for sticking around. And until next time, you guys have a very blessed, blessed day.